Welcome, welcome everyone. Let's start on the mat and we will need something to sit on. So I'm going to use one of these wee blocks um, and you can use anything that you feel comfortable sitting on and you can even um, perhaps choose to sit on a chair for this first part if anybody, I don't, don't think anyone in this class needs to do that but maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, so we'll just find ourselves a comfortable seat. I like to start with my legs um, out and then fold them into wherever's comfortable. We've got a late arrival. Always happens. There we are. Okay. So just starting with the feet, wherever is good for you. You guys know enough now to know um, when you're in a comfortable seat. And it doesn't really matter what this seat looks like. If you're doing crossed legs, then we're going to do this series through twice. Um, so you'll switch the cross of your legs. Um, if you're doing this kneeling, that's okay. We just do it twice. If you've just recently arrived to this class, please mute your sound so that we don't interfere. Very good. Okay, so to begin with, we're just going to lift ourselves really tall. Try and center the head over the body, relax the arms wherever is comfortable, and close the eyes for a moment. If you really need to keep your eyes open, and that's no problem, sometimes it just takes us a little bit longer to get comfortable with that inner space, then gaze at one point ahead of you, perhaps on the floor, to keep your eyelids maybe partly closed. And just tune into exactly what your body's telling you right now. The bits of your body that are perhaps needing a little bit of TLC. The parts that are feeling at ease, in comfort. Perhaps you're aware of what works to allow you to sit in this beautifully tall, seated posture. And once you've had a quick scan around the body, maybe just tuning into what's on your mind, the sort of thoughts that are coming to you. How you're feeling today. Trying to avoid any negative self-talking. So if you are genuinely feeling really sad or angry or frustrated or displaying any of the more challenging emotions, allowing that to be the case. There's no need to change it. That's what we're doing the yoga for. So just observing. And finally, tuning into your breath. Just being aware of the rate, the rhythm of your breath. It's good to notice where your breath is moving in your body. If you find it's very high, feeling more movement in the top of the torso, this is a point where you can maybe try to just gently draw the breath downwards. Perhaps softening your belly slightly and allowing the breath to move deeper down in the torso. Today we're doing a practice centered around the hips. The hips are the seat of emotion in the body. 
it's not unusual to have emotions come up and require releasing. So throughout the practice, we will sigh out through the mouth. We're going to do our first one now. So take a deep breath in and sigh. <sighs> Maybe you feel a softening across the forehead or the chest. We'll try it one more time. A deep breath in. Let out whatever needs to be let out. <sighs> And then just allowing your breath to fall into its natural rhythm. You can flutter your eyelids open or lifting the gaze. Maybe giving yourself a little inner smile or an outer smile. Um, and we'll begin, uh, we're going to do six movements of the spine here in this position. So if you want to change your position, that's okay if you need to stretch your legs out for a moment. But if you can maintain your position, then we're going to draw the abdominal muscles inwards and upwards. And first begin with a couple of nice deep breaths. So breathing in, reach the arms out to the side and up. Lifting up through the chest and the upper back and breathing out, drawing the hands together, dropping the palms down to the center of the chest. Let's do two more. Breathing in, reaching out and up. Breathing out, drawing the palms down into the center of the chest. One more, breathing in, out and up, maybe even looking up. Breathing out, drawing the palms down. Awesome source. We're gonna breathe in, taking the arms wide. We're gonna breathe out and take the right hand to the left thigh or knee. And then breathe in as we stretch the left hand behind us and drop the hand to the floor. So a little gentle twist in this position and rolling the shoulder blades towards each other, lengthening through the crown of the head, uh, through the back of the neck, lifting the crown of the head. We're just going to take a deep breath in here and a deep breath out. And then we're going to sigh as we exhale this time. A deep breath in and we're going to release the arms, unwind and ah. Oh, Back to the center. Wonderful stuff. Breathe in, take the arms wide. Breathe out, take the left hand to the right knee or thigh. Breathe in, reach the right hand behind you, drop it down. Just allow your breath to keep flowing in its natural rhythm. Roll the shoulder blades together, lengthen through the back of the neck, lifting the crown of the head tall. But take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Then we'll release with a sigh, a deep breath in, release the hands and turn ah, back to the center. Releasing the hands to the side, lifting the right hand up and gently draw the right shoulder blade down so you settle the shoulders down the back. Breathe in as you lengthen just through the fingertips, lifting the belly and breathe out as we gently lean into that uh, left side. So here we're just finding a space that feels good for you. If you don't want to hold immediately, then you can just gently draw yourself inwards and outwards from this side bend. And what we're focused here on is the length down the right side of the body, rather than how far to the left we're going. Very good. Let's take one more breath here. And then we'll turn the palm and breathe in back to the center and sigh as you exhale, arms down to the side. Ah, very good. Same thing to the other side. Breathe in, lift the left arm up. Breathing out, dropping the shoulder down the back, drawing the shoulder blades down to open the chest. Breathing in here and as you breathe out, leaning into your right side to stretch the left side. And again here, if you don't feel comfortable just holding immediately, sometimes that feels very rigid, you can do a gentle, really slow, almost like a pulse in and out of this side bend. Maybe lengthening through those fingertips a little bit more. Very good. Concentrating or focusing your energy on that 
stretch you get down the left side of the body. It's not about shape, it's about how it feels. And then to come out, we're going to turn the palm, breathe in and up, sighing out through the mouth. Ah, arms down to the side. Fantastic. Now we're going to breathe in, take the arms forward and up, opening the chest, lifting the belly. We'll breathe out as we fold forward from the hips and just coming to wherever feels comfortable for you. If you feel a pull or a resistance in the body, don't go beyond that. And if it feels okay, you can hold your arms up like this, really engaging the tummy muscles and the space behind the shoulder blades. And if you prefer, you can release your arms down, a little bit more restful on the shoulders in this early stage of the class. Rolling the shoulder blades towards each other, lengthening again through the back of the body. And if you want to, you can fold a little bit deeper down. It doesn't matter, again, what sort of shape you're making. It's all about the experience of a length and space. We'll take a deep breath in, it doesn't matter where you are. And sigh out through the mouth. Then <sighs> we're going to pad our hands back towards us. Coming into a nice upright position. And here we're going to take the arms behind the body, breathing in, taking the arms down, rolling the shoulder blades together as you breathe out. And then lifting in the belly muscles, lifting in the chest, maybe lifting in the, uh, the head as well, opening the throat. We're going to breathe in as we lengthen through the front of the body, breathing out, keeping strength in the back of the body to hold this movement really steady and stable. One more deep breath in and breathing out. And then we're going to gently press up as we breathe in and finish with that exhalation <sighs> as we come back to center. Excellent. Six movements of the spine, really lovely for awakening the body. We're going to stretch out these legs that have been crossed all of this time or uh, underneath the body in a kneeling uh, position. Just lengthening the legs and paddling the knees if they need a bit of a paddle. And you can roll the thigh bones in the hip joints by just waving the feet from side to side. Okay. So we're going to do that series again, but with the legs crossed the opposite way. Um, so you can reposition yourself on support if you've used support. And I can never remember which way around I've done my legs, but I think I'm this way around this time. And if you need a little bit of support under the knees, of course, you can use that too. So let's begin with those three breaths, sitting as tall as you can, lifting through the spine. Breathing in, taking the arms out and up to the sides. Breathing out, drawing the palms down the body and hands to the center of the chest. Breathing in, reaching out and up, lifting the chest perhaps. Breathing out, centering the hands straight down that main energetic line. Breathing in and up, looking up if it feels comfortable. Breathing out and down. Breathing in, taking the arms out to the side. Breathing out, yes, taking the left hand to the right thigh. So we do the opposite way around. Breathing in, reach the right hand down around behind you. Breathe out as it comes down to the floor. Breathe in, roll the shoulder blades together. Lift through the back of the body. And breathe out as you hold this gentle twist. Remembering not to press through any resistance in the body because we're just beginning our practice here. We'll take a deep breath in and release the arms. Sigh as you exhale. Ah, twisting back to center. Releasing the arms down to the side. Breathe in, reaching the arms wide. Breathe out, take the right hand to the left thigh. Breathe in, reach the left hand around behind you and drop it to the floor as you breathe out. Breathe in, roll the shoulder blades towards each other, lengthen through the spine. And just hold a comfortable position for your twist as you continue to breathe deeply. Twisting 
only happens when the back is lengthened. So you can get the twist with a curved spine, but it won't be as good. So try to keep your spine really lifted. We'll take a deep breath in and then we'll release as we exhale. Ah, back to center. Releasing the arms down to the sides. Breathe in as we lift the left arm up. And breathe out, just dropping the shoulder down. Breathe in, gently reach over to the right side and maybe this time holding your stretch to the right. If it feels comfortable, you can open your chest a little bit towards the ceiling. And that might, um, lots of people have the top shoulder falling forward in a side bend. So this helps us to keep actually bending to the side. We'll take a deep breath in here, turn the palm and come out as we exhale. Oh, back to center, dropping the left hand down, breathe in, reach the right hand up. Breathe out as you draw the shoulder blade down the back. Breathing in as you lengthen to your left side. Holding here perhaps. Finding space, maybe rolling the chest a little bit up towards the the ceiling, if that feels good. If that doesn't feel good, don't do that. Another long, deep breath in. And then we'll come out by turning the palm, breathing in and up and breathing out as you and release down. Bending forward now. So begin by breathing in and opening the chest, lifting the body maybe slightly backwards and breathing out as you fold forwards. Come to wherever feels comfortable and really scooping your belly in helps here, gives you more room to move in the back of the body. And this time dropping the arms to the floor, even if you didn't last time. We're going to tent the fingertips and try and walk our fingertips away from us just a little bit to find our way into this uh, forward bend. You might find that a gentle sway from side to side gives you a little bit more room to maneuver. And it doesn't matter if you're up here. It's not about the shape, it's about how it feels in your body. So come to whichever uh, position feels the most comfortable. You can take the palms flat to the floor or the forearms or the forehead if you're very um, limber in this position. We'll take a deep breath in, scoop the belly in and sigh out in the posture <sighs> before coming up. And the reason why we do that in forward bends is because it um, helps us to release in the forward bend. We'll finish with our backward bend. So breathing in, opening the arms out to the side, taking them down behind you as you breathe out. Roll the shoulder blades towards each other. Maybe lean back on your hands slightly, open the chest. Lift the belly, lift the head perhaps. If your head is back, just checking that your neck is nice and stable and free, not cricking or holding anything there. We'll take a deep breath in here and sighing out. And then just gently pressing yourself back up to an upright position, releasing the hands. And we're going to spend a moment before we release the legs. If you've already done so, don't worry about that. But just spend a moment with the eyes gently closed or the gaze downward and observe the effect of your practice. Note how the back of the body feels the shoulders, the hips, the front of the body. Observe the fingertips, the palms of the hands. And then when you're ready, you can bring your hands to Namaste, lifting your chest, taking your chin only towards your chest. Feeling that gentle stretching. Smile to yourself. When you're ready, raising your head. 
releasing your hands and opening your eyes. Okay, let's release those legs as well. So stretching the legs out in front of you, paddling the knees a little bit, rolling the uh, thigh bones in the hips, the femurs in the hips, just waving the feet from side to side. And here you can use a block for this next um, stage, but if you want to dispense with it, you can. So sometimes sitting cross-legged or even kneeling gives the knees a little bit of um, uh, tension. And we can release that by taking the outside edges of our hands, so little fingers, either side of the kneecap and just creating a bit of friction. So you're pressing quite firmly and you're rubbing up and down the leg, uh, sorry, up and down the sides of the knee um, until it feels nice and warm. And then we're going to do the same top and bottom of the kneecap. So a little sort of scissoring action, creating a little bit of friction and heat and warmth and nurturing. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to take the outside edges of the hands, either side of the kneecap, pressing quite firmly and rubbing. When they begin to feel warm, up and down, top and bottom of the kneecap, same sort of thing. Aces. And then just giving the knees a little bit of a, a massage perhaps. And even the backs of the knees is quite a nice place to massage as well. And sometimes that, that just helps to release any feelings from being seated quite so long. So we're going to do a practice um, called deer pose. So if you take your uh, right thigh out to the right and you bend your left leg in front of you, so your left knee is pretty much in front of your left hip, and your right knee can be anywhere that feels good. You get this sort of um, mermaid position. Uh, sorry, Ian, mermaid position. Uh, but uh, it's, it's really called deer pose. Um, and it doesn't matter how you get there. If, if, you're, if you want it to be a little bit more forward, uh, particularly for that right hip, then that's fine too. Just do something that feels good with your knee. And if and the right leg is not as important here. So if you want to keep that right leg straight, you can absolutely do that too. So do what feels the best for your body. And we're gonna begin by giving our feet a little bit of a massage. Um, so using your hands, just perhaps begin with the, the pads of the toes. So just, it doesn't really matter what you do, do what feels like it's helpful feels like it's going to be useful and uh, feels natural. We're just going to stimulate the tips, the balls, the pads of the toes, and then rubbing along each toe, particularly the underneath of the toe. So that doesn't get very much love most of the time. Basis. And once you've rubbed through the toes, you can stimulate the ball of the foot using perhaps circular motions with your thumbs. And if you had um, uh, one of those spiky balls, you could use a spiky ball or a tennis ball and do this with your foot on top of the ball. Then we're going to use the thumbs to stimulate along the bottom of the foot, uh, the instep, the space that perhaps doesn't normally touch the floor, and around the heel of the foot, Anything that feels good. And give your foot a little bit of a rotation here, if that feels good. And then we're going to use our thumbs to find the first point of the kidney meridian, which is just underneath the center of the ball of the foot. So underneath the ball of your foot, right in the center here, there's a point that feels just a bit more tender than the rest. And we're trying to find that point. We're not trying to press it super, super hard, um, although you might need to do some quite firm pressing to find it. Um, but we're just giving it a bit of stimulation. So once you've found it, you can give it a little bit of um, uh, circular pressure, just a little, little circular movement with your thumb, holding uh, 
pressure on that point and a little firmness perhaps. It doesn't need to be very, very much. If you haven't found it, if you can't feel this point, don't worry. Just using your thumb, that space just underneath the ball of the foot or the, the rear side of the ball of the foot, if you do the motion there, you'll still get the effect, even if you're not uh, in tune with the uh, feeling of it. It doesn't matter. Lots of yoga is like that. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to come to the ankle bone. And so the ankle bone, the part that's closest to your body, if you press your thumb just near that area, so where the ankle bone is, we want between the ankle bone and the Achilles tendon, there is another kidney meridian point that we're going to stimulate. And again, it will feel a little bit like a, a sharper sensation or a more bruised sensation than pressing on the area around it. That's how you know you've got it. Awesome. And if you don't have it, again, all you need to do is stimulate that area using your thumbs and you'll catch it for sure. Super. And our next point is just above the ankle. So where your ankle bone is, if you put your second, third and fourth fingers right next to the ankle bone and then come to the body side of the shin bone, there is another point there. And this point might be much more obvious than the previous two because it's the point where three of the leg meridians meet. So three of the energetic lines in the legs meet. And so we will stimulate this one gently, not too, too much. And we're working with the kidneys because the kidneys are the seat of jing, vitality in the body. Um, and so uh, keeping that meridian clear of obstacles and flowing makes us feel more vital, more energized and a little bit more vim and vigor, which is nice. Okay, so we've stimulated these three points. We're going to do a little sweeping motion to, to allow the energy to move up the leg. So along the sole of the foot, just from the toes towards the heels or towards the ankle. And then we're going to sweep the hands from the sole of the foot up to the knee, along the inside edge of the leg. And then we're going to sweep the hands from the knee up to the hip along the thigh. It can be the inner thigh and the outer thigh. You just stimulate the whole area if you want to. The inner thigh is where we're uh, aiming for. Then we're gonna start from the foot and go all the way up the leg, foot to knee to hip, foot to knee to hip. And then when you come to your hip, maybe just stimmy, just with your hands rubbing across the back of your hip, outside edge of your hip, and on the front of your body, around your, uh, where your torso meets your pelvis. Awesome. And then releasing. We're going to extend our legs out in front, one and then the other. Just take care how you come out from that right side. Lean back on the arms ever so slightly to open the body a bit and we'll just wave our knees if you bend them place the feet on the floor wave the knees from side to side very good lengthening the feet out in front and just rolling the feet and ankles both directions that's fantastic and I've forgotten to do something in that posture, so we're going to have to go back into it again. Sorry about that, guys. So bending, <laughs> bending yourself back into your deer pose on the same side. We're going to do a forward fold here. So breathing in, take the arms wide, open the chest, and breathing out as you fold forward. It doesn't matter where you come to, dropping the arms down. And you can feel your way here. So it might be quite nice to have a gentle sway from side to side, but do what feels right for your back. 
scoop the belly in, try to keep your shoulder blades moving down your back to open your chest a bit like you were doing cobra pose and find your way over your front leg to wherever feels good. If you are able to, you might be able to bring your forehead down to the floor. And if you find that the floor is just a little bit too far away, bring the floor up to meet you by stacking your fists one on top of the other or using whatever support you sat on earlier. And if you prefer, you can just simply leave the hands or the forearms on the floor and lengthen through the back of the neck. So try not to drop the head too much forward. Lengthen through the back of the neck. Find that strength there and you can simply hold with your head free of support. We'll take a deep breath in here. And a deep breath out. Maybe you can feel a gentle lengthening across the outside of the hip and the buttock of your left leg. One more deep breath in. And deep breath out. Then we're going to firm the belly, pad the hands back towards us. And we're just going to do a twist as well. So here, twisting to your left side, it doesn't matter how far round you go to the left, and then folding again. So twist and fold, just finding your way down. Perhaps you want to bring your forearms to the floor. Um, and that might feel like a really nice opening stretch across the, the right hip there. And if this doesn't feel good lower down, that's okay. Just come further up and you can, your mermaid pose, no, just joking. Um, you can uh, find a comfortable spot where you feel like you're doing something good. And you might like a little bit of a, a sway here as well if holding static doesn't feel so comfortable. So whatever position you're choosing, you can go much further around, of course, if you are twisty in the body. We'll take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And one more like that. Maybe this time we'll sigh out through the mouth. Deep breath in. Ah, and then you can bring yourself up on your fingertips, turn yourself back to the center, and now we can undo the legs. Goodness gracious, can't believe I forgot that bit. So in between, we'll do a little bit of an up, up plank. So the first one we're going to do is with the feet on the floor, hands behind the body, fingertips probably pointing forwards, but if it feels better to point them out, you can. Roll your shoulder blades towards each other, firm the belly, and then just lifting the hips up. You can look towards your knees, or if you prefer, you can let your head um, go a little bit back so you look up towards the ceiling. Keep that lift through the, the hips, the buttocks, pressing down with the arms, and then gently releasing. Very good. And then lengthen the feet out in front of us. We're going to do the whole thing to the other side. So taking your left uh, leg and bending it to one side and your right leg bent in front of you. And essentially it doesn't matter what that left leg does, so do something that feels comfortable. I'm going to begin by doing a gentle massage across the right foot. So the balls, the pads of the toes, I want to call them the balls of the toes, but they're the pads of the toes, pads of the toes. Stimulate these ones first. And then the backs of the toes, particularly the lengths of the toes, the underneath of the toes, should I say, not the backs of the toes, the underneath of the toes. When you've done a little bit of that, you can do the balls of the feet. Just wakening them up really. And then using your thumbs to stimulate the underneath of the foot, the instep, the center of the foot, the outside edge. And then the heel of the foot. All around the heel. Good. 
And when you've done that, maybe you want to just rotate the foot a little bit at the ankle. Squeeze it, knead it. I don't know how many of you have been baking like demons in lockdown, but maybe putting your new baking skills to the test on your feet. And then we're going to find that uh, first kidney point that we're working with. So just underneath the ball of the foot, on my foot, there's, there's almost like a, a little place that says, yes, this is the place um, where the two paddy bits of the ball of my foot meet almost in a point and then my instep starts or the center of my foot starts. So find that point. Now on my other foot, um, it was much more obvious where that point was. So as soon as I touched it, I was like, yes, that's the point. And on this foot, not so much. So uh, that might be also the case for you and it's just an observation. Um, it doesn't mean anything that we need to worry about right now, but it's interesting to note. So finding, if you can, that first kidney point, and if you can't, just using your thumbs to massage that space in the center of the foot, just underneath where that, the ball of the foot is. Lovely. And then we're going to move to our second point. So we come to the ankle bone and then the space just behind the ankle bone towards the body in between the ankle bone and the Achilles and finding that point. And so strangely, it feels so different. On the other foot, it felt really sharp and very definite. And here it feels almost cold, like a really cool coolness to it. Weird. So observe at your end what's going on with yours as well. It'll be interesting. Very good. So we're stimulating with the, the thumbs, just gentle circular movements, or you can simply press and hold. Then we're going to take our first, second and third fingers and rest them against the ankle bone just at the top and find that point on the inside of the shin bone. So it's towards the body, almost like it's tucked in behind the shin bone to me. Um, and there is that triple meridian point. And that can feel a little bit more, more, <laughs> a little bit more um, than the other points that we've stimulated. So just going gently here, um, don't, for example, create so much acupressure that you make yourself in pain. Um, that would not be good. Although, I guess you'd have to talk to an acupressure person to know for sure. So just remember that what you're doing is stimulating vitality, jing in the body. There we go. So once we've done this for a few moments, we're going to begin to sweep the energy from the front of the foot to the heel of the foot and the ankle. So from the toes to the heel of the foot and the ankle. Very good. And then from here up to the knee. So from the foot up to the knee along the inside of the leg. It's quite nice to feel like contact and warmth sweeping in your energetic system as well as on your physical form. And then from the knee to the hip, across all parts of the thigh that you want to work with, whether it be the outside of the thigh, the top, the inside of the thigh. And then we'll start from the foot and go all the way up to the knee and then to the hip. Lovely. We're going to finish with a little bit of a massage across the outside of the hip and the front of the torso where it meets the hips. Very good. And on this side, we're not going to forget, you're not going to forget anyway, but I will try not to forget um, to do the next exercise or the next part. So sitting tall, 
scooping the belly in and reaching the arms wide as we inhale we're going to fold forward as we exhale just taking the hands down to wherever feels good so here you might want to gently sway yourself to negotiate a bit more space we're looking for rolling the shoulders down the back and lengthening the back of the neck so we create almost like a cobra shape with the upper body and we're going to find our way down into what feels like the best uh, position for you. So if you want to come all the way down, you can, absolutely. But if it's more useful to be a bit higher up, then drawing the shoulder blades down the back, lengthening through the back of the neck, and keeping the chin a little bit retracted towards the spine, so it's not just dropping forward, so to support the weight of the head. And then we'll take a couple of deep breaths. We'll maybe breathe in and sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> and then we'll bring ourselves patting the hands back up to center. We're going to twist away from the legs now, turning towards the right side of the body. And you may, maybe your twist takes you almost around back behind you. Um, but we're not forcing anything. So we're not looking for anything, any particular shape. We're just trying to find the twist that works best for us. And again, once you're twisted, finding a way to bring yourself maybe a little bit forward as well. It might be enough just to twist. That's okay. But if you can, bring yourself a little bit deeper down. And again, here, if you want to, you can uh, release your head to either the floor or some kind of support. Or you can simply keep the back of the neck engaged. Wherever you get to, find a little bit of stillness once you're there. And just hold as you breathe. Personally, I find the stillness the hardest part of yoga, most challenging. We'll take a deep breath in and sigh out. <sighs> And we're going to pad our hands back towards us, gently easing back to the center. We're going to bring the left leg forward first. Feels good to release on this side. And bringing the right leg forward, paddling the knees a little bit, rocking the feet from side to side. So this time, um, to release, we did uh, like a reverse tabletop last time. This time we can do uh, what's called an up plank. Um, I always want to say Pers Vottanasana, but I think it's actually something else in Sanskrit. So here, if, you're, if you want to, you can have your fingertips pointing forward or pointing backwards. It doesn't matter. We might do both. Um, uh, but choose the one that you know works best for you. I'm going to do fingertips pointing forward to begin with. We're going to breathe in, draw the shoulder blades together, lift the buttocks and point the toes down and breathe out, release the hips back down to the floor. So really firm in your center, breathing in and coming up, breathing out and down. Don't worry if your toes don't get to the floor, that's just ankle flexibility. One more like this, breathing in, shoulder blades together, lift the chest, breathing out and down. If you've done it with fingertips pointing forwards, try it with fingertips pointing backwards or vice versa. Um, and if you know that one of these doesn't suit you, then don't change. Roll the shoulder blades together. Breathe in, open the chest, lift the belly, lift the hips. Uh, and look up if you want to. Breathing out and down. Breathing in and up. Breathing out and down. This time, holding. So choose the position of the hands that feels strongest for you. Breathing in and lifting up. Drawing the shoulder blades together, keeping that sense of lightness in the front of the body. 
And if you can, you can lift the right leg up. Just rotate the foot three times in one direction, three times in the other, and then releasing down. Lift the hips again, lift the left leg up, rotate three times, and three times, and down. And then we're gonna let the hips come all the way down. And here, you'll be very pleased to know that we're going to swing round onto our front and have a little bit of a rest with the forehead supported by the hands, Toes towards each other, heels apart. If you prefer to turn your head to one side, of course, head to one side. And take a few deep breaths. And if you want to. If you feel you've got something to release, which often we do after those really big chest opening uh, practices, particularly when we've stimulated the hips as much as we have, then you can take a deep breath in and sigh out through the mouth. Ah. Very nice. Then take your hands underneath your shoulders, forehead to the floor, Press back into extended child's pose. And spend a few moments there. You can have your uh, hands in front of you, which is extended child's pose. If you prefer, you can have your hands back down by your ankles. It doesn't matter which of these you choose for the next few deep breaths. In this pose, try to let go of any effort that you've been making. So, Soften the features of your face. Find a little softness in your belly muscles, your shoulders, your chest. And particularly observe that space in the back of the body, behind the hips, buttocks, low back. And perhaps as you breathe, you can feel that space expanding. Opening. And as you exhale, perhaps you can let go of anything that you've had sitting there. Feel that your breath will not only dispense with toxins, carbon dioxide, but also let go of any emotions or feelings or Tension that you don't need. And after your next deep breath out, you can reach your hands forward if they haven't been forward already. We're just going to walk the hands to the right side. So walking the hands to the right. Now you might find that it's quite nice to also lengthen your hips to the left at the same time. See if that feels good. If it doesn't, then just stay in the center. If your head no longer reaches some support, bend your right hand underneath your body, uh, underneath your forehead, or your right forearm, or your right fist. And if you're happy with your head floating away from the floor, you don't need to worry about that. Let's take a couple of deep breaths into that left side of the body. After your next exhalation, having your hands back to the center. In the center, it's really important to realign, particularly if you shifted your hips. So realigning, we'll spend a moment here, but turning the palms upwards. So we lengthen the, the fingers away from us, but also drawing the little fingers towards each other by turning the palms upwards. Feeling that different stretch across the arms, the upper back. And then when you're ready, you can walk your hands to your left side. 
stretching out the right side of the body, maybe shifting the hips ever so slightly to the right. If you need some support for your head, you can bend your left arm underneath your forehead. Just taking a couple of deep breaths here. After your next exhalation, walking your hands back to the center. Then we're going to come from extended child's pose up into hands and knees. Oh, that feels nice. And here, I'm going to stretch out the legs. They've been bent up for a long time. So let's lengthen the right leg out behind us. Maybe toes on the floor. And you can just rock backwards and forwards into that um, heel, extending through the right heel. Backwards and forwards. Nice. Good length in the back of that right leg. We'll slide that knee back underneath the body. Lengthen out the left leg. And toes tucked under, just extending through that heel. Excellent. Easing out the body into a different shape. And then coming back to center. So we're going to find a place for our hands. I like to have my hands slightly in front of my shoulders, as you know. Uh, knees underneath hips, spreading out the fingers. And remembering that the outside edge of the sort of heel of the hand will take the vast majority of the weight, but we want some to be in the first finger and thumb to even out. So we've got the weight even across the fingertips and the hands. Begin by Finding a neutral position for your neck, maybe twisting a little bit side to side, drawing the head up and down as you retract the chin. Finding your neutral spot, then engaging your pelvic floor and your abdominal muscles quite strongly. Do some cat pose. Breathing in as you look forward, opening the chest, lifting that belly, stretching the front of the body. Breathing out, rolling through the spine, chin to the chest. Breathing in forward. Still engaging pelvic floor and abdominal muscles, looking up, maybe sliding the shoulders down the back a little bit, breathing out and rolling through the spine. Breathing in, drawing the shoulder blades down, opening the chest, still lifting in the belly and the pelvic floor. Breathing out, rounding, lifting the spine upwards, chin towards the chest. One more. Breathing in and opening. Breathing out, rounding, and releasing the opposite way. Coming back to the center, we're just going to bring our knees a little bit closer together and then take the right leg and flex the right foot and draw big circles with your right knee. So try to keep the rest of your body as passive as possible by engaging the pelvic floor, the abdominal muscles, the space between the shoulder blades. Reverse that rotation of the knee, making hip circles the opposite way. It doesn't matter what sort of circles you're making. They can be big, they can be small, they can be subtle. We're going to float that knee down to the mat, bring ourselves into the center for a little cat pose. So inhaling, lifting the chest forward, sliding the shoulder blades down the back. Breathing out as you round through the spine, chin to chest. Excellent, come back to the center. Same thing on the left side, tucking the toe, flexing the heel, drawing nice big circles with your, oh, nice circles, big or small with your knee. Keeping the abdominal muscles engaged. Keeping some effort from between the shoulder blades. Making sure that you haven't got tension in your neck as you move. We we'll go the opposite way as well. Very good. Fantastic, sir. We'll float that knee back to the floor. Do a nice little cat pose. The inhaling, looking forward, opening the chest, sliding the shoulder blades down. Exhaling, rounding through the spine. Shoulder blades slide up, chin to chest. 
One more. Inhale, forward. And exhaling, rounding. Very nice. We'll come back to the center. We're just going to take a child's pose to release the wrists. Turn the palms upwards. Take the forehead to the floor. Floor to some support. And if you can't turn your hands upwards comfortably here, you can release your hands down to your hips, so down to your heels rather, which is quite nice as well. So whichever position you choose, just taking a few deep breaths, again feeling that breath in the low back, across the back of the hips, and across the buttocks ever so slightly. After your next exhalation, allow your hands to find uh, firmness on the floor again. And coming up onto your hands and knees. We're going to keep our knees quite close together. Tuck the back heel, sorry, the um, right toes under. And inhale the right heel up as you look forward. Exhale, round through the spine, knee to nose, chin to chest. Inhaling. Opening the front of the body, lifting the heel behind you, tiger pose. Exhaling, as you draw the knee in, keep the heel up towards the buttocks. Inhaling up, and exhaling, rounding. We'll do one more. Inhaling up, and exhaling, rounding. Excellent, float that knee to the floor, come back to neutral. We'll do the same thing on the other side, tucking the left toes under. Inhale, still firm in the belly, looking forward, lifting the left knee. Exhale, rounding under, chin to chest, nose to knee. Inhaling, up. Exhaling, rounding, keeping the heels close to the buttock. Inhaling, up. Exhaling, rounding. Inhaling, up. Exhaling, rounding. I can't remember how many we did, so we'll do one more. Inhaling and exhaling, and then floating your knee back down to the floor, and we'll come into downward facing dog. So, if you need to reposition your hands, you can tuck your toes, keeping your knees bent, lifting the heel at uh, the hips up, and just sort of wiggle yourself up into your dog. So, trying to wiggle your spine to be nice and lengthened, and then when you're up, you can paddle through your heels. So lengthening one leg and then the other, maybe turning your head gently from side to side to feel that sense of space and release in the neck. Very good. We're going to take their feet together. We're going to do the same uh, sort of motion as we did in Tiger, but with a three-legged dog. So left, uh, so sorry, right leg first. Heel up behind you, lengthening the right leg up behind you. You can even look forward to your hands. And as you exhale, draw your right knee into your chest, your heel towards your buttocks and your nose towards your knee. Inhaling up to three-legged dog, looking forward, firm in the belly. Exhaling, rounding through the spine, nose to knee, heel to bucket, <laughs> buttocks, and shoulders perhaps over hands. One more, inhaling up. And exhaling forward. And then we'll do one more as we inhale up. This time we're coming into fallen triangle. So we're going to exhale forward and then take your right foot between your left foot and hand. Take your weight onto your right hand and your left foot and lift the left hand up into the air. Super duper. Take a deep breath in here. Drawing the shoulder blades together, really firm in the belly muscles. And then deep breath out as you reach your left hand to the floor again. Come back into your three-legged dog. Float your right foot down. You're going to paddle through your uh, feet. And we're going to take a little child's pose rest here before doing the other side. So knees down to the mat, forehead to the floor. You can turn the palms upwards if you like. And take a few deep breaths. My microphone's gone astray in the course of that, so please excuse me while I get it sorted out again. You guys, just rest.
like this. So after your next exhalation, you can come back onto your hands and knees, bow your hands, tuck your toes under, come up into your downward facing dog, paddle out any effort that you have in the back of the body, maybe swaying the hips. But here it's quite nice to bend the knees and just twiddle your tailbone from side to side. That's a nice one. When you're ready, you can bring your, hand, your feet together and we're going to float the left heel up, looking forward, three-legged dog. As you exhale, draw the knee into the chest, heel to the buttock, nose to the knee, shoulders over the hands. Inhale, look forward and up. Exhale, knee to chest, nose to knee, heel to buttock, shoulders to hands. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, drawing the knee in. And then this time we're gonna inhale up, exhale, knee in, and then take the left heel between the right hand and foot, roll onto the left side, reaching the right hand up. It can be right up, it could be right over, doesn't matter here. Firm in the buttocks, firm in the belly, breathing in. And as you breathe out, take your right hand back down again, pin it on your back foot, come back into your three-legged dog and float your left foot down to the floor. Come back into your down dog and just give yourself a bit of a paddle. I'm looking at the time, making sure we've got some time to do some more things. And then this time we're going to bring our feet together and we're going to come forward for a lunge. So lifting the right leg up, opening the chest as you look forward. And as you exhale, draw the knee into the chest, but then step the foot outside the right hand. And so you have your foot at the front of your mat. Awesome sauce. Here, we're going to bend the front knee. So we come into a lunge, but we're slightly wider than our normal lunge. Back knee off the floor for now. So if you soften your back knee down, but not onto the floor, you're going to just play by rocking backwards and forwards keeping the back knee off and lengthening through one leg and then the other. So we're really stimulating a stretch along the right hamstring here. Very good. And alternately right hamstring, left hip flexor, sort of. Then coming forward, we're going to try and find our way a little bit closer to the floor if possible. So if you can, you can move your hand slightly in front of your foot and try to sort of wiggle yourself a little bit lower down. Now, that, it doesn't matter if that's not uh, for you. You can stay higher up. That's no problem. If you do get down, perhaps it's easier with the, the back knee down for you to get down, to get this openness across the um, underneath of the hips. So if you prefer your back knee down, you can have your back knee down. This posture is called the lizard. And um, you can have your back knee up if you prefer as well, it doesn't matter. If you've got it in your ankles, you can roll onto the outside edge of your right ankle. And at the same time, you can use your right hand on your right side to do a little bit of a twist here. Opening up, feeling that engagement through the center, just going where it feels good for you. And it might be that you have your back knee down, that's not a problem at all. And it might be that you want to open your arm and your uh, up and over to open your chest, really get that beautiful stretchy, twisty motion. And we're all going to take a deep breath in wherever we are and a deep breath out. And then just rolling your foot back to the floor, hands back underneath the shoulders. We're going to lengthen the back leg if it wasn't already and step back into a three-legged dog. So really press off the hands, lengthen that uh, right leg up and then float the foot down to the floor and paddle through your feet. You can give yourself a little bit of, um, I don't know, movement through your dog. So here it's quite nice to lift opposite arms and legs or hands and feet rather in dog. And then coming back into your dog, and just making 
Any motions that feel good before we do the same thing with the other side. So feet together, firm in the belly, breathing in, lifting the left leg up behind you, looking forward. And as you breathe out, stepping the left foot forward to the outside of the left hand. And before we, we hold our lizards, we're just going to rock backwards and forwards. So you can bend your back knee down a little bit, not to the floor perhaps, and then press off the front leg, stretching the front leg, stretching the back leg, stretching the front leg, keeping that knee, uh, mo both knees mobile. Very good. Going backwards and forwards. Finding whatever feels good for you. Maybe you want to lift the heel of the front foot, uh, the toes rather of the front foot. And then we're going to come into the lunge itself, bending the front knee a little bit deeper, finding a way to get closer to the floor if you'd like to. And if that means that you drop your back knee down, that's okay too. So here, it might be that you can come easily down onto your forearms. It might be that you roll onto the outside edge of your left foot. My left side doesn't like to do this quite so much, but maybe yours does. And so you might want to also lift your left arm up to get a beautiful twist here, opening the chest. And it's just the same to do it up on your hands is to do it down on your forearm. You do it where it feels the best for you. So wherever you are, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Beautiful twisty lengthening. Now we're going to roll the left foot back to the floor, take the hands back underneath the shoulders, tuck the back heel and come up into a three-legged dog, stretching out that left hip flexor before floating the foot down to the floor. Paddling in your dog. Doing anything that feels good to you. Maybe softening the knees and wiggling the hips from side to side. If you keep your belly firm and that space between your shoulder blades working, you'll center and stabilize your core. You can do anything pretty much from a stable core. When you're ready, you can float your knees down to the mat and come into child's pose. If it feels comfortable, you can turn your palms upwards just to release the wrists. You might like to have your hands back down by your heels and your hips. Take a couple of long deep breaths here. And then after your next exhalation, you can reach your hands forward if they weren't already. Come back into your hands and knees. And I'd like you to watch um, what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to open my stance, my hands and knees, so that my hands are a little bit further forward, my knees perhaps a little bit further back than my hips. And tuck my toes and come up into uh, a nice wide open downward dog. We're going to do a waving mo mo movement from down dog to up dog. So from here, just watching, keeping the knees nice and soft, we're going to bounce on the knees a little bit and then round through the back as we keep the knees a little bit soft, elbows a little bit soft. And as your chest comes between your hands, we're going to roll the shoulder blades together, opening the chest and lifting the head to look forward in an up dog. This is nice and buoyant. And then to come back, Bending the knees, shooting your buttocks up and curling into your downward facing dog. And at the end, either end of the motion, we'll, uh, we'll spend a moment and then bend the knees, roll forward through the upper back, keeping the knees nice and soft, opening the chest, keeping that lift in the belly and then rolling back. Knees bent, shooting the hips up and coming into downward dog. So let's do a few of these together. Come into your downward dog, get a really nice good grip on the mat, soft in the knees, 
bit of bent backwards and forwards. And then when you're ready, scoop the belly in, round through the upper back, round through the whole back. As the chest comes between the hands, draw the shoulder blades towards each other, open the chest. Make sure that you're buoyant here, that you're lifting using your core. And then bending the knees, shooting your bottom up as you press your chest back towards your thighs, coming into downward facing dog. We'll do two more. Firm in the belly, soften the knees, round through the upper back. As the chest comes between the hands, roll the shoulder blades together, open the chest. You can rock a little bit here, back and forwards on your toes if you want to. And then rounding, shooting the bottom back up, downward facing dog. Sorry, my feet are really squeaking on my mat today. Okay, one last time, soften the knees. Round through the upper back, scoop the belly in. As the chest comes between the hands, roll the shoulder blades open. Firm in the belly, lifting into your up dog. And then bending the knees, shooting the bottom up, coming into downward facing dog. Then step your feet a little bit further in, makes your down dog a bit more stable or a bit easier to hold. And then gently easing through the neck by Twisting the head from side to side or shimmy the left and right. Paddling in the knees. And in your own time, you can release down into child's pose or lying flat on the tummy. Turning the palms upwards to rest the wrists. Or release the hands down to your hips, your heels. That ends our really active part of the class. So let's let it go with our breath. Deep breath in, sigh out. Ah. Deep breath in, sigh out. Ah. One more, deep breath in, sigh out. Ah. Then just allowing your breath to fall into its natural rhythm. Falling away into silence. Soften all of the effort you don't need. The features of your face, your forehead, your jaw. Soften the space between your shoulder blades your upper back, your chest, arms, hands, wrists. And softness in your belly, in your buttocks, in your feet. Big Bob Thunderpants are cockerel has just chosen this moment to start crowing. And I'm not sure if this microphone will pick it up, but if it does, I'm so sorry. When you're ready, slowly and gently, bringing yourself into a comfortable position for relaxation. So you might want some support and you might want a blanket or some warm clothing across you. Uh, but if you can, uh, so grab that as quietly as you can and bring yourself into whatever position suits you best for relaxation. So today that might be Shavasana, it might be uh, with your knees bent and your feet on the floor. Taking a few moments to find the comfortable spot for you. You don't need a bolster. If you've got one, you can use one, of course. But if you don't have a bolster, then simply using a, a cushion or a rolled blanket, if you like, you can just have your legs long on the floor. It doesn't matter. Choose a comfortable position for your hands. We're just going to release the back a little bit more before we get super comfortable in Shavasana. So bending the knees into the chest. You're going to do a little bit of rocking from side to side. 
Here it helps to use a touch of control across the belly muscles. Just so you're always safe protecting your body as you practice, honoring it as you practice. And then you can make circles with the knees and it might be that you want your knees to make alternate circles, which is quite nice in both directions, where you might move your knees at the same time in the same direction. Doesn't matter, do what you naturally feel is best for your body. Feel that massaging effect happening across the back of the hips. And the kidneys themselves, whilst the meridians don't actually uh, relate to the organ as directly as we might perhaps think. Um, the kidneys themselves are just tucked under the back of the ribs there. And so if we are making motions like this, we stimulate all across that low back area and into where the kidneys are without creating any uh, pressure we wouldn't want, undesirable pressure. Just a nice massaging action. And whenever you're ready, you can lengthen your legs. And we're going to take the arms wide and rest them, uh, cross them over the chest and just rest the fingertips down to the floor. I had a whole thing with the arms that we haven't had time for. Um, so we're just going to do this gentle stretch. If you reach your fingertips towards your shoulder blades and see if you can just inch your elbows a little bit further across and then hold this stretch as you breathe, really relaxing in the elbows, maybe relaxing in the hands when you get there. Feeling that space between the shoulder blades, find its length, its opening. When you're ready, you can release the arms out to the sides, and then we'll do the opposite side. So crossing the arms the opposite way, the opposite hand on top, inching the fingertips towards each other underneath the back of the body, the elbows further across in front. Taking a couple of deep breaths. After your next exhalation, just releasing, releasing the arms down to wherever feels good. <clears throat> you might want them a little bit wider away from your body than normal. Explore which position suits you best here. Gently rolling the head from one side to the other really letting the weight of the head be supported by the floor. Don't be lifting to turn your head, just rolling backwards and forwards. Apologies if that means you have to take your hair down. And then coming back to the center when you feel that you're ready to, really comfortable. We're gonna take a deep breath in Sighing out through the mouth. <sighs> Three more like this. A deep breath in. Let everything go. <sighs> A deep breath in. Relax your effort, relax your muscles. <sighs> A last deep breath in and surrender your weight down into the mouth. And now soften the breath. Allow it to reach its natural, spontaneous rhythm. Maybe to fall into silence or near silence. Take your awareness into your forehead, feel it soften and spread.
Feel the area around your eyes relaxing. Your mouth, tongue, jaw releasing. Move your awareness to the back of your body. Become aware of the heaviness of the back of the body. The parts of the body that are in contact with the floor. Where the back of the body is able to really let go. To really release. to surrender to gravity. Allow softness to come to the back of the body. Observe any patterns of holding and try to release. Move your awareness to the front of your body. Again, find those patterns of holding. See if you can further soften, further release the front of the body. Feel the touch of air on your face. Feel the movement of your clothes on your skin as you breathe. Feel the sensation of holding space in the palms of the hands. Draw your awareness to your breathing, gently deepen your breath just a little. Breathing in long and slow and deep. Breathing out long and slow and deep. For the remainder of relaxation, we're going to coordinate our breath with a mantra. As you breathe in, repeating the mantra, so. As you breathe out, hum. Breathing in, so. Breathing out, hum. Breathing in, so. Breathing out, hum. Breathing in, so. Breathing out, hum. Continue in this way. Relaxing your face, your shoulders, your tongue. Releasing, softening a little deeper with every exhalation.
And in again, steepen your breath. Bring your awareness back into your hands and your feet by moving your fingers and toes. Maybe rolling your wrists, rolling your ankles. And you feel ready. You can take a long, deep breath in, stretch the arms. Ooh, maybe yawn to stretch the face, stretch the legs, stretch the back. And in your own time, you can bend your knees into your chest. Take any motions that feel good to your spine. Maybe you simply want to hold your knees towards you. Roll your head from side to side. When you feel ready, you can bring yourself onto your side. Spend a few moments just allowing the body to come around a little at a time. Then in your own time, coming up to any comfortable seated position, keeping the eyes gently closed if you can. We're going to finish with the hands here in Namaste. The mantra so ham means I am that. And I'll try and remember to put a more detailed explanation. It's a little bit deep and uh, complicated to go into right now. We'll bring our chest up to meet the hands. Bow the chin towards the chest. Find your inner vitality your inner smile and allow it to blossom forth onto your face. When you're ready, raise your head, release your hands and open your eyes. Namaste guys. Thank you for joining this practice. <laughs>